Good evening and welcome to Gay Liberation Network's uh, call-in show, live call-in show. We are here this evening. I'm Brent Holman Gomez with the Gay, Gay Liberation Network and with me is Roger Fraser, a uh, transgender activist from the northwest suburbs um, involved with Gay Liberation Network on a variety of direct action uh fronts uh, focused around LGBT equality, but in also including immigrant rights, uh, anti-war um, activity, and, uh, and many other fronts to bring liberation to the populace of, of Chicago and the world beyond. So uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, tonight we've got a couple of uh, topics to talk about, hot topics. Uh, number one is uh, Don't Ask, Don't Tell. There's been some movement on that out in D.C., and we're going to chat about that with Mr. Fraser. And um, also we are going to be talking about Moscow Pride with the Pride March, not a parade. Uh, it takes place tomorrow, which uh, is only a few hours away in Moscow, I believe. Yes. Um, and uh, that takes place tomorrow, and uh, we we have a representative there on the ground in Moscow, um, and so we'll be talking about what's all going on there. So it is a live call-in show. We invite your calls. Uh, the number's on the bottom of your screen, 312-738-1060. And we invite you to check out Gay Liberation Network's website at www.gayliberation.net. So, first of all, um, we have this Don't Ask, Don't Tell uh, development. There have been a variety of uh, direct action activities taken um, uh, across the country uh, in the last couple of months to, to push this to the, to the fore. And uh, we're finally getting some attention in, in Washington. Um, why don't you fill us in on what happened today, I believe, or yesterday. Uh, yeah, probably. yesterday the uh, House uh, uh, passed uh, uh, the repeal of uh, Don't Ask, Don't Tell, uh, which is, as most of you, everyone knows, is, is, a, um, is a, a regulation that uh, made it so that uh, uh, gay and lesbian uh, people who joined the military would be allowed to stay in the military as long as they did not um, uh, make their uh, sexual orientation known. So that's been repealed by the House. And what the Senate does is, is another matter. Uh, it was largely a partisan vote. The Democrats, I believe, had 229, or maybe it was 220. I think there were five Republicans that uh, joined the, uh, the Democratic minority. So, you know, largely partisan vote. And uh, Last night I heard uh, Rachel Mad Maddow um, say that, um, uh, you know, this was a huge step forward. And, uh, and although it's a uh, step forward, I think it's important, Brent, to, to realize that, um, uh, you know, there's a couple of really problematic uh, uh, things about this, uh, this repeal uh, by the House and presumably by the Senate uh, if they go along with the House. Um, and that is that um, uh, that uh, it's contingent upon that is the, the the you know whether this repeal stays a repeal um, is contingent upon uh, the decision of the uh, of the Pentagon basically the Defense uh, uh, Secretary uh, Mr. Gates and uh, and also the Joint Chiefs of Staff um, and I believe the uh, the head of the Joint Chiefs of Staff is the uh, is is representing the Navy I I forget his name but I do remember that. Uh, that the uh, the guy is um, uh, is very uh, is not uh, pro uh, pro gay and in fact has uh, you know very uh, very uh, severe uh, reservations about uh, allowing this. Um, well, you know what kind of an appeal, what kind of a repeal then is this that has to wait uh, for several months for a um, for the uh, Pentagon to investigate its feasibility and whether it might not impact negatively uh, so-called uh, national security. Um, yeah. There is a um, criticism of this, you know, ruling that basically you're allowing a discriminatory. Um, action not to be taken away by the electorate or the at least representatives of the electorate in, in a democratic process but leaving it up to you know a, a militaristic um, top-down 
uh, decision making. Oh, sure. I mean, you know, what, what kind of democracy is it that we pass, uh, we, you know, the voice of the people speaks in the House and then, uh, you know, but it's all contingent upon whether the, uh, the Pentagon accepts it or not. I mean, you know, come on. What, I mean, what's that about? Uh, but in addition to that, there's also the uh, the feature that m a number of activists around the country have emphasized, Brent, and that is the uh, fact that the um, you know there is no end. Uh, the, the the repeal, the the bill, the act now, uh, the repeal has nothing in it that uh, that uh, between now and say uh, December when this document comes out made by the Pentagon. There's nothing that prevents the military uh, from um, uh, discharging uh, uh, gay and lesbian peop uh, folks who, who, who come out publicly. Uh, that's not part of the bill. So presumably, even though it's been repealed, these discharges can continue with impunity, and uh, you know there's nothing uh, there's there's nothing uh, that prevents it. Uh, the president could very easily issue a, um, a stop loss order, an executive order, to just prevent that. So far he hasn't done it and so far there has been no response to the uh, request for clarification on this issue by, um, by activists around the, uh, by LGBT activists around the country. We'll take a call. I've got a caller. I hope you allow me 30 seconds at least to speak. First of all, the military is for the defense of our country. I mean the military may not be a place where you want to conduct a social experiment. Anybody that ever been in the military, whether you're gay, whether you're straight, whatever, when you join the military, you give up certain civil liberties. And that's a fact. And that's how the military works. If, if you want it to work, that, that's how it is. Okay, thanks. Okay, thank you. Uh, may I respond to that? Yes. I mean, there was a time when, uh, you know, African Americans were not allowed in the military. And uh, that so called social experiment, as you call it, uh, was a was a very important move movement forward and, and promotion of democracy of uh, in in this country um, so to say that you know this is just merely a social experiment I think it's really de uh, derogatory and uh, and unfair because uh, you know uh, there has been a struggle to 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 make the uh, military more inclusive, including women, including uh, uh, African Americans, uh, with all the all the rights of white soldiers that they have, uh, and that they've had uh, historically. So to to, to exclude uh, LGBT from this tradition of trying to gain admittance into the military is really unfair and discriminatory. Um. I want to show a picture of uh, one of the scenes of actions that have been taking place in the last few weeks at the White House, particularly to draw attention to Don't Ask, Don't Tell. Um, uh, this is a, uh, a picture of, uh, I believe it was six folks that were uh, arrested uh, mid-April. And this is the second time that some of these, actually it may have been the third time that many of these people had been arrested um, doing the exact same action, handcuffing themselves to the White House fence um, in an effort just to, to get attention uh, and, you know, and change this, uh, this discriminatory law. Um, there, Dan Choi is uh, probably the most uh, remarked person that uh, is involved here. He is an Arabic linguist that was uh, fired, discharged um, from the military, and uh, you know, in the, and these are uh, this is at a time when the military actually has a shortage of Arabic linguists, and so they're you know firing people just solely based on their sexual orientation, even when they are in dire need of, of some more assistance here. So, um, so uh, you know, as this, so this don't ask, don't tell um, repeal, quote unquote, has been passed by the House. It's, it's going to the Senate for uh, for a vote. I believe it was Obama's compromise, so um, it's likely that he would he would uh, sign off on this. Is that yes, correct? Yes, yes, yes. He's uh, he 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 expressed uh, you know um, uh, approval of what the House did. Okay. And insofar, if you, if you if you just let, let me be very clear on this, Brent, if you just take what the House did, obviously it's a you know it's a move it's a move forward. I mean, it's better than a, 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 a you know it's better than voting against the repeal. But what I'm what, I guess the point I'm trying to make is that there are real gaps in this, and real and 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 there's a real question of no, it isn't it isn't final. 
Um, there's a tendency on the part of people, I think, uh, some activists, to um, to say, "Okay, we've won. Uh, let's go home. Let's 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 uh, let's stop the activism." Um, and uh, we can't do that. We we have to hold this administration's feet to the fire. We've constantly uh, seen that uh, they they will drag their feet on honoring their promises that they made in 2008 to a number of different constituencies. And uh, unless we hold their feet to the fire with, uh, with the kind of activism that was representative of last Thursday when several of us, you and me both, were in D uh, Dick Durbin's office and refused to leave until uh, Dick Durbin, our senator, uh, spoke to us on the phone. We were then ushered out and arrested. Well, nevertheless, I mean, you know, it, it's frustrating to be arrested and not be able to, t to contact our, our senator. However, it's these kinds of actions around the country that have brought about repeal. This is what gets things done in Washington. Yeah, and um, you know, there's been talk about uh, you know just the the fact that the Democratic Party um, has not been as active in delivering what we've you know what they have promised and what they say that they're friendly to us on. Um, you know, even Dick Durbin is supposedly friendly on many of these these items and his co-sponsored bills and things, but those things never come for a vote. And so it's yeah. it's wonderful to see that this thing did actually come for the for a vote in the House, and we'll see where it goes from here. But even if it does, you know, there's a, a few more steps that that uh, that they have uh, compromised in there, which basically take it out of the out of Congress's hands and into the Pentagon's hands before right. there's an actual real repeal and and effectively there is no repeal because the discharges continue yes. at a rate of more than two per day. Yes. Right. People yeah. are being fired and losing their jobs in the military just because of their uh, status as an L LGBT person. So we went to, we were watching Gay Liberation Network's um, uh, monthly call-in show and uh, you can reach us at www.gayliberation.net. Our next uh, organizing meeting uh, is Wednesday the 2nd, this coming Wednesday at 7 o'clock p.m. Uh, at Burger Mansion on the north side, uh, 6205 North Sheridan. It is uh, just a couple blocks off of the Granville Red Line stop. We invite you to come out and join us and make some plans for the future. Um, we have a caller. Gentlemen, I'm not trying to be insulting. There's a reason why I don't ask, don't tell what put in place. In the first place, if you guys ever been in the military, the, I'm not gay. The military is one of the most dangerous places for a gay person to be. And that is a fact, no matter how you want to put it. You know, when you have a, a military... You got to have people that want to be cohesive, willing to work together. Not to say gays cannot work together, be in the military. Like I said before, the military is one of the most dangerous places a gay person to be, and that's a fact. Thanks. Well, uh, it's a, it's a, the military, especially in places like Afghanistan and, um, and Iraq, Pakistan, Somalia, um, Yemen. They're dangerous places for anyone to be gay or straight. Um, it's a it's a dangerous occupation. Um, it's in a, in a time when unemployment is is close to ten percent across the country, it's still a very attractive uh, alternative for many young uh, young men and women um, because it it provides some job security and, uh, and it's it's a it's a place to go and it's a, it's it's an attractive uh, tra attractive option. Uh, for many people, especially uh, poorer, poorer individuals. Yeah. But uh, the fact of the matter is, is that you have to remember, I mean, this caller has to remember that there are plenty of lesbian and gay people already in the uh, military and already in effect, de facto, recognized as such. Uh, you know, the, 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 number, the number who are there who, and who are recognized as being gay and lesbian um, is, is really quite large. I mean, probably in the thousands. Um, they don't all get discharged. Uh, it, I mean, there has to be a process that's followed. So is it, is it creating a problem now? No. The, the, most veterans who come out and, 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 or who, who, who have who've been asked the question, straight, straight veterans now, 
you know, did, did, did you know anybody gay in the military? Yes, I did. That's the answer. Yes, I did. Did it create a conflict for you in your unit, in your squads? No, it did not. This is, is, is overwhelmingly the judgment of most uh, young, uh, young men in the, in, the, in the military, young men and women in the military today about their colleagues who they know are gay. You know, I mean, as long as the, the gay person, uh, lesbian person doesn't start hitting on, on somebody, it's not a problem. It is, it's dangerous to come out as LGBT in Wyoming, and yet people do it all the time. So we have another caller. Hi, thanks for taking my call. Um, I guess two really quick questions here. How old is don't, don't Ask, Don't Tell, and are there any other militaries in the world that do have any other system than uh, something similar to Don't Ask, Don't Tell? Thanks. Um, don't ask, don't tell. Uh, went in no, 1996. Uh, no, not, uh, 1993. Uh, it was one of the first measures that Clinton uh, uh, brought about. Clinton went, campaigned in '92 on on a, a platform of 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 allowing gays to join the military, um, gays and lesbians to join the military, and um, uh, you know, and that's it. You know, and well, you know, there was a hue and cry in the Congress about this, you know. Uh, I mean, things were a little more backward back in 1993 than they are today. Uh, the compromise measure then, you know, was, okay, don't ask, don't tell. And, uh, and it's been in effect in the law for the last 17 years. Okay. Uh, with respect to other militaries, um, I'm not sure, I, Brent, do you know? I thought the I Israeli the, the, military allows, doesn't it allow? Yes, um, as well as the Netherlands. Um, and those are the two that I have heard of. So there, there are some examples. Uh, there are also, I think, militaries that have never established a ban to repeal. Those are, those are two that have had a ban at some point and mm -hmm. have repealed their ban yeah. on uh, LGBT persons in the military. Do we have another caller? All right. Thank you for your calls. We are going to move on to our next topic, which is uh, Moscow Pride. It is happening in a few hours in Moscow, um, and our representative Andy Thayer is um, on the ground there, and uh, this is his second year participating in in this action, which is very much a direct action protest. There, um, the uh, the government has been hostile to um, to the to a proud you know, LGBT presence in their city. Um, it is supposedly legal to be uh, LGBT person in Russia uh, since the mid 90s. Uh, they changed their laws there. However, on the ground, um, it is not uh, permissible to, to be an out and proud LGBT person. And here we have a picture of the mayor of Moscow um, uh, and he has um, banned the Moscow Pride again this year. I believe this is the fourth year in a row that they have been Fifth year. they have been banned. <laughs> Roger, tell us some more about that. Sure. Um, well, the gentleman you just saw, Yuri uh, Luskov, is his name, is the mayor of Moscow. And for the last five years, uh, Luskov has uh, banned um, uh, uh, gay uh, gay pride marches through the, through the city. Um, I mean, this is in violation of the Constitution of Russia, which, you know, decriminalized homosexual, homosexuality 17 years ago. And in addition, um, there's, you know, the, the Constitution allows for, uh, you know, for free, freedom of protest. Uh, you have a right to protest and you have a right to assemble. I mean, these are, these are guaranteed rights in the Constitution. Um, Luskov has refused to honor these, uh, you know, these these in these uh, sanctions in the in the Constitution, and um, unfortunately, uh, the the president of the country, Medvedev, and uh, and the, his prime minister, uh, Putin, have um, have have been silent on the issue. So you know, these bans stand year after year, ever since uh, two thousand and six. Um, uh, Andy Thayer uh, of Gay Liberation Network has, this is, as Brent said, this is his second year of having uh, of having uh, gone there. He's been joined by uh, a Green Party member of Parliament, uh, Volker Beck. Um, 
He's been joined by the founder of Idaho, uh, which is International Day Against Homophobia, and I, I believe his name, I, I, this pronunciation, I may be, may be wrong on my French, is a little weak, Louis-Georges Ton. I believe is his name, and also with the uh, the, the gay right activist uh, and uh, coordinator of outrage from England, Peter Tatchell. Uh, so these four uh, these four individuals um, are representing the international community, and I want to say something, Brett, about that, um, namely this, you know, Gay Liberation Network in Chicago is centered in Chicago. It's a purely voluntary group of folks who get together. You know, we don't have deep pockets. Unlike Human Rights Campaign or the um, National uh, Gay and Lesbian Task Force, who, which, which has deep pockets and was, which does fundraising over and over and uh, uh, has the wherewithal to send people to Moscow to be observers of this process. Because every year, uh, the, the risk that these people take, these activists in Russia take, um, led by, in particular by um, um, Nikolai, Alexeyev. Nik Nikolai Alexeyev, who's been a guest of the GLN here in the United States. He's the one there on the left. Um, uh, Nikolai has himself been uh, assaulted. Peter Tatchell in past years, I think two years ago, was assaulted. Um, a lot of times the police, who themselves, the riot police, may not do the assaulting, although they certainly don't handle people very gently. Uh, but sometimes they stand aside and let these fascist thugs, uh, who are very prominent in the anti-gay um, uh, homophobic uh, uh, reaction against the assertion of gay rights in, uh, throughout Russia, they allow these thugs to come in and beat people up. Uh, and it's also, it's also, uh, you know, auth not authorized, but almost encouraged by the uh, uh, the the Russian uh, uh, the Russian Orthodox clergy, who egg these people on and say and call them satanic. Lutskov, the mayor, is himself called gay people satanic. Well, you know, this is this is a call for uh, for uh, basically when you call someone satanic, it's a call to beat them up uh, and to um, to assault them. So that it's extremely dangerous for, for these activists, these Russian activists joined by their international allies like Andy Thayer, to be over there and do this march. I mean, it's not similar to our pride parade at all. I mean, we take no risk. They do. They take a very, very large risk. And the fact that there are not international observers over there, financed by, for example, Human Rights Campaign or the National uh, Gay and Lesbian Task Force is really is really sad. It's really a commentary on on our parochialism. You know there are struggles, LGBT struggles in Africa. I mean, there's three countries have in Africa have the uh, have a death sentence for for being gay or engaging in 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 in, uh, in homosexual uh, uh, behavior, sexual behavior. Um, so, as I say, there's a crying need for observers. There's a crying need for participants to join with the, uh, the, the, the with our, our brothers and Russian brothers and sisters. Yeah. Uh, and, and last year, I want to say there were about 40 uh, participants, and pretty much all of them were arrested. Yes. Um, yes. There. So it it, it it's reason it's there's, it's with reason that it is difficult to get a, a large number of people to come out because there's. There is the threat of violence as well as um, as arrest, and it's only been I think last year was a uh, th there weren't as many uh, people being beat up, but just two years ago there were um, Volker Beck had a had a concussion uh, from this, and Peter Tatchell had quite a bit of uh, damage. Do we we have another caller uh, we'll, that we'll take? Hello. One of the most one of the most dangerous places for gay people or gay activists. We, we, Thank you, caller. We have we've we've heard that uh, message. Um, yeah. So, uh, you know, the, everywhere in the world is is pretty dangerous for uh, for LGBT people, and we're trying to make it a better place. So, uh, thank you guys very much for tuning in this evening. Um, please watch for news from, coming from Moscow Pride in the overnight here. And we look forward to you joining us at our organizing meeting this Wednesday, um, just off the Granville Red Stop at the Burger Mansion 
6205 North Sheridan Road, 7 o'clock p.m. on Wednesday. From Roger Fraser and Brent Holman Gomez of the Gay Liberation Network, Peace and Pride, June 1st starts Pride Month. Over and out.